So, as someone who was introduced to the epic monstrosity that is the character of Godzilla with the 2014 edition, a time where I was still in high school, it's safe to say two things. One, with my tiny, tiny high school brain, as well as the direction and mostly the lighting of the movie, I didn't really grasp the true nature and essence that the Godzillas of the yesteryears really captured. And two, Godzilla is based as fuck. Now don't get me wrong, it's not like I didn't know the idea or the concept of Godzilla as a whole. I've had this theory for a while now in my actual life outside of YouTube, and there's no better time than to share that with you now. I just believe as a kid, and I'm sure some of the parents watching this video, you can definitely relate. Your parents really just get you on that one thing. That one show, movie, or character, maybe even a franchise that they themselves really liked growing up, or even are currently enthralled with at the time. For 2000s kids such as myself, there were the usual suspects like adult animation and cartoons such as The Simpsons. If your parents were based, they allowed you to watch Toonami as a kid, gaining an anime edge to you, and rounding out into big and epic movie franchises such as Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, and of course, Star Wars. That's what I was put on, and as sad as it might sound to some of you, I've never even thought about putting on a Godzilla film in my household, ever. And with the year 2023 coming to a close, in another unsurprisingly mid-year in regards to the big and small screens, with films like Aquaman 2 and Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon and Wonka still competing and trying to fight for a spot on the majority of YouTubers and Hollywood Chills Alike's top 10 list, best or otherwise. It's never too late to stop being a dick. <laughs> but leave it to Japan to come in with an absolute banger in December to close out the year of what is quite possibly and admittedly some people's movie of the year. Godzilla Minus One was a masterclass in storytelling, character writing, while finding a way to still be an epic and destructive creature feature. A film that, in theory, showcases the true definition of what that Martin Scorsese meme really represents. As someone who was first introduced to the idea or the trailer of this movie, I honestly thought that Godzilla Minus One as a whole was just a passionate fanfic. A film made just for the sole justification for an update and more accurate depiction of the monster himself, or by someone who just had disdain for the MCU felt monsterverse, which admittedly I do enjoy. But I can understand why people who are actual fans of the character of Godzilla don't, especially after watching this movie. And while I can gush about everything this movie does right and how satisfied I felt leaving the theater, which is definitely not a frequent occurrence. Let's talk. The movie itself is set in the dying embers of World War II. Japan is on the brink of losing the war, and this is where you meet our boy Koichi Shigashima. An active but now ex-kamikaze pilot who, after reporting a fake mechanical problem with his aircraft due to not wanting to die in a losing effort, lands his aircraft for repairs on a small island where he and a small group of mechanics living there are introduced to and promptly dispatched in slight order by Godzilla! With Koichi and head mechanic Takizawa managing to find a way to survive the whole ordeal, the war finally comes to a close with Koichi returning to Tokyo only to find his home in ruins due to the warring air raids, with the majority of his neighborhood, including his parents and his neighbor's children, finding themselves as collateral damage. Dishonored and riddled with survivor's guilt, Koichi finds solace in a semblance of purpose in a fellow orphan and wanderer Noriko, who due to a series of unfortunate events, finds himself taking her in and creating a sort of family with her and the child in her care named Yahiko. And while that pretty much lays out the groundwork without really diving into how much you'll actually care about our human characters throughout the film, because you definitely do. A lot. What about the king himself? While I'm sure the majority of you know the backstory for a character as infamous and as culturally relevant as Godzilla, the gist goes as such. 
America nukes Japanese open waters and creates Godzilla. Accidentally, I assume. Godzilla goes on to wreck Japan. Japan asks for help. America says, nah, it'll be fine. Russia's kind of going to get mad at us. Japan gets fucked. Godzilla wins. Well, that's how it will go in real life. This is still at the end of the day, as dreadful as the tone might make you feel. This is still a movie. The point is, Godzilla needs to be stopped at all cost. With Koichi in a small town size worth of forces being the only thing stopping the monster from wrecking havoc on the country as a whole, the question is, while Koichi fights his own internal demons, will the ragtag group of characters that you've come to know throughout the film be able to stop what almost seems like an unstoppable force? Who will be lost in the process? Will the people of Japan be able to rally against all odds or face annihilation as a whole for the second time in a decade? Who knows? So let's just get to... Right, so I don't really have to outline... The message. Or allegory behind the creation of the character and brand that Godzilla has become. Coming from a different and unique point of view on the war and the use of nuclear weapons that we were not privy to and programmed not to really bat an eye at over here in the West, look no further than the 2014 adaptation of the character and you'll see what I mean. And while those elements and aspects from the old iterations are still very much at play in the narrative here, Koichi is very much the star of the show even more than the monster himself. How dare you! A character that from the audience's perspective finds himself in a very unrelatable situation, but under very relatable circumstances. Dishonored and watched in lack of self-worth, Koichi throughout the entirety of the movie is a character that you are really genuinely rooting for. It's a shame to say, and in reality, it's hard to put into words what I'm really trying to get at here and how the movie was structured, but much like Koichi, I'm gonna try. The film as a whole just felt as if we, well, not we, but it just felt as if the movie was getting back to the roots of what cinema really is. Something that we, Hollywood, is having a really hard time with nowadays. It just felt traditional and refreshing watching a classic hero's journey as Koichi goes from a dishonored soldier, a man shunned from society that doesn't hold back on the type of person that doesn't follow through on his duties, to being a courageous man who puts his family first and is finally starting to see the bigger picture, not only in regards to his situation, but the man he wants to become. Becoming a sort of redemption story as he comes to the gripes of his own past misdoings, ready to tackle whatever force the future throws at him. And in this case, in the present, that force is Godzilla. What an absolute menace. And it's incredible to watch as an audience member because you're genuinely flooded with a mixed amount of emotions ranging from dread, terror, anxiousness, and sheer epicness at the scope of everything as Godzilla rampages throughout the city, island, or ocean without a second thought in the world. It's just a predator claiming his territory, and it's hard to know which Godzilla is the most powerful out of the two in circulation right now. And that's a good thing. I will tell you that that atomic breath is probably one of the most devastating abilities that I've seen put to screen. Fuck that. That's death 100%. That being said, Godzilla Minus One is one of the most entertaining, gripping, harrowing, and most of all, fun experiences that you'll have in the cinema all year. Made on only a budget of $15 million, again, $15 million. It's actually insane and pretty mind-blowing to think of how much this movie was able to accomplish on such a small budget, especially when compared to the shit on a screen that we have to deal with over here in the West, with most shows receiving almost double the budget for one sole episode of a half-assed and poorly managed shit stain on a screen masquerading as entertainment. Gross. At the end of the day, Godzilla Minus One is a masterclass in cinema making, in a film and studio that out of all of the movies to be released in 2023, truly and genuinely deserves your time.
Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. The year is coming to a close, so keep a lookout for my top whatever videos. Best, worst, mid, I don't know. I'll figure out how I'm going to structure it this year. But with the release of Wonka, Rebel Moon, and Aquaman 2, we're really looking at a photo finish. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you enjoyed, why not click on more while you're at it? But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.